On this Tool Tips episode from NTD Racing, we upgrade our Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro with a compressed air dryer from Harbor Freight. Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to my shop here at NTD Racing. Over my shoulder is the Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro CNC Plasma Cutting Table. In about 90% of the videos that I make, I use this table and Fusion 360 to make all kinds of parts, but especially for Honcho, which is our 1978 GJ10 race truck, which we just got done racing in the Baja 1000 with. Three of the videos that I make, I specifically talk about putting together the table and some of the tricks I, I've learned to make the table work more efficiently. What I've also found is that it is critical to have dry air going to your table. So today I wanna to talk about this thing right here, which is my Harbor Freight compressed air dryer, which I just recently put together and got to work in the, uh, the shop. What I wanted to do is show you what I did. So in case you're in the market for one of these, there's no surprises about what you're getting into to get one of these working in your own shop. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Well, I'm not normally a fan of watching or doing unboxings, but in this case, I've seen a lot of people asking about compressed air dryers, especially on the Langmire Systems forums, either on Facebook or on their own form on their uh, webpage. Uh, so what I wanted to do is check out what's inside of this box. I got it from Harbor Freight. This is their compressed air dryer. Usually on their page, it's about $400. After some coupons, I have it in my garage for less than $300, which I think is a pretty good price. Now I wanna hook it up to my Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro and see if I can see a difference in consumable life and also cut quality. Let's go ahead and take apart the box, put it together, get it to work, and then see how it does. After you've opened the box, this is what you get. Uh, you got the machine and you have some instructions. On the front of the machine, you just have a couple lights, indicator lights, some information, a temperature, pressure gauge, uh, which they talk about in the instructions on how that's supposed to work. The air goes in on the top uh, and out on the top also. These are half inch NPT. The instructions are pretty good, I would say, for most things that come out of Harbor Freight. Uh, there's one section where it explains how to hook up the wiring. Now realize that the wiring does not come with the compressor. So you uh, should get in a professional electrician to go ahead and hook up the wiring for the, uh, the system. Also, the way that the air hooks up is also not provided. You need to do that. Now the way that I have, I plan to do it is um, just a little bit different than how they have it in the, uh, the drawing there to see if it works. This is what I'm doing. You can do the same or try it. I'll tell you how it works after I've set it up. I have these T's, which are half inch NPT, and those will go on the top. This will be the inlet and this will be the outlet. Then I, I'm gonna reduce all those down to a quarter inch NPT. On the inlet side, I plan to have two disconnects. One is gonna be an input disconnect. This will come from my compressor and one will be an outlet. Uh, this will be just in case I just wanna run the air off the top of the, without it going through the compressor and I, I'm lazy, I don't wanna disconnect it from my, the, the hose from here, I could plug it right in into there, or I could have two things hooked up at the same time. That's why I'm gonna put one of those on there and really just to kind of fill a hole. On the other side, on the outlet side, again, two reducers going down to quarter inch NPT. And then I'm gonna have two of the quick disconnects that, which I will put onto that. One will go to my plasma cutter and one will be just open for other tools. And if I use them, I just don't use a, a, a uh, compressor very often for anything. I have some tools, but I usually use DeWalt 20 volt uh, when I'm for most of my tools that would be normally a compressor run tool. And then to seal the threads, I'm gonna use this uh, pipe thread sealant. So my plan was to use the uh, pipe thread sealant by Rector Seal. Uh, it ended up just being a mess. It kind of reminded me of using Gorilla Glue where no matter what you do, you're getting it on your hands and the stuff stains like crazy. So I ended up just using Teflon tape and it held all the air and everything perfectly. So I just recommend just using regular old Teflon tape. So here's the side of the air dryer. Um, basically it's got two screws and you just go ahead and take the screws off to remove these panels. Once the screws are off, the panel comes out pretty easily. Set that aside and we see what's in here. Um, it looks like the electrical, uh, this is, I'm thinking the condenser, I'm speaking terms I don't know, like I literally don't know how all ACs and all these dryers really work 
or what's in them. I'm pretty sure this is a flux capacitor. But anyway, uh, this is where it looks like the electrical uh, hooks up. And then if we look on the other side, um, again, Sure, it says what's in there. It looks like some kind of water separator. This is a drain that comes out the side. And then other things that look a lot like what you might find inside of an air conditioner unit or something like that. But uh, this is what you got. And here's like the air inlet right here and the air exhaust. We'll go ahead and get our professional electrician in here to uh, wire this thing up. All right, my uh, awesome electrician just got done working on this thing. And uh, what you got on top here is you have uh, the wiring diagram. is isn't exactly obvious, but you have the uh, ground and they had this little tiny tab on there before I did it and it, it shows that that was the ground so you have the ground you have the neutral uh, in the middle and then the hot and it's wired up in there and then uh, cool let's get it back together and get it working well this is a pretty awesome tool if you haven't seen one of these yet I just recently saw it and I had to get one uh, DeWalt screwdriver and I just love DeWalt every DeWalt tool I've ever got I still own today and this one's really trick because all you do is you put it in the screw you hit the uh, the button and then whichever way you turn twist your hand is which way it turns the screw super uh, trick it works really well and the more you turn it the faster the screw is going to turn you can also use it just as a regular screwdriver also I think it's a really uh, cool tool okay let's look at the whole system all together First off, it starts with my DeWalt single stage compressor, which has been working great. It was a bargain and all I really use compressed air for is my plasma cutter. So this thing has been perfect for what I needed to do. It goes through my uh, cam air filter and into my uh, hose reel. I have bypassed these two things right now because all I want to do is test my compressed air dryer without those things and make sure it's going to work i might bring those in a little bit later on but really i want to test to see if this thing will work independent of those let's take a look at some of the fittings that i've used i have off of the compressor i have a three quarter inch mpt which uh, goes down to an elbow and a quarter inch mpt into the other uh, hose before the hose i have this valve right here and this allows me to not only turn the air on and off but also regulate the rate at which it goes into the compressed air dryer there are some modes i guess where if the dryer uh, isn't building up pressure you turn off the air run the dryer then you slowly let the air in this valve allows me uh, to do that a six foot hose goes into the uh, the top of the re, um, the air dryer and then it can either come out here without it being dried or it comes out over here through two sides like i said i was going to do uh, where it's going to be the dried air and that goes in the back of the uh, my razor weld for the plasma table some other setup stuff uh, I have here I just put it on one of the Harbor Freight cheapo carts and it just actually fits perfectly in there everything in my shop is on wheels so I can move it around as I clean stuff uh, up in here but uh, now we got power on there it's plugged in I'll go ahead and turn it on and get this thing to uh, to start charging up they say to let it warm up for a little bit and once it does we'll go ahead and knock out the first cut and see how this thing uh, does as that thing's warming up Let's take a look at the plasma table over here. I just put in new consumables. Again, I am using a hand torch from the razor weld. I've been really happy with the performance of this so far. I keep saying to myself, you know what? Uh, whenever the razor weld dies, I'm going to go ahead and get a hypertherm. The only problem is this thing doesn't die. It's kind of like my Toyota truck. I say the same thing about that thing. As soon as it dies, I'm going to get a new truck. And I've had it for 14 years now. And you can see as you get in close here, I mean, the, the razor weld, this is obviously the, not enough, this is just the, the trash metal here that I'm going to throw away later on, but the cut's good. I mean, the cut is as good as any other plasma cutter I see uh, out there. So I don't see any reason to change that. I have been having some issues like other folks with the misfire of the torch. Razorwell did put out, or I'm sorry, Langmar Systems put out the fix for that. I'm going to make another video of that fix, me doing it and seeing how it works. But so far, once the the consumables have uh, been seasoned, if you will. It, the thing works awesome and it cuts with no problem. It's just that, that one misfire problem you get with brand new consumables. Let's see if we get that with uh, this cut. Let's go ahead and get to it. Well, as you can see, I had no problem with the, uh, the consumables in this case, no misfires from the, uh, the torch. So it works fine. Um, I'm cutting in this uh, video 11 gauge still. I'm cutting at 65 inches per minute and I am using 45 inches per minute for the lead in and lead out. And that tends to work pretty good for me for uh, about eighth inch still. 
Uh, sometimes you can go a little bit faster, a little bit slower. It seems like 65 inches works pretty good for me. The other thing you might be wondering is uh, as far as the compressor, since it's going through so many fittings, am I losing pressure? And I just have never had problems with the pressure, especially coming from that DeWalt single stage uh, compressor. Uh, it'll run it down to about 110 PSI, kick on the, the compressor, and it'll come right back up to 150. I never have problems with the volume of air that is being demanded by the, Lang, um, by the uh, razor weld. There you go. I think the cut turned out really good. It looks pretty good. This is 3 16 still now that I'm cutting, and uh, I dialed this down. I'm cutting it 50 inches per minute. And then I do my lead in, lead out about 30 or 35 inches per minute, just a little bit less uh, for those. Uh, and again, uh, no problems with the consumables, no misfires. It does uh, just awesome. Once those things are seasoned, it does awesome. I think once I do the fix that the Langmar Systems recommends, I think it's going to be perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and check out and see what the cut quality was on this cut. And there you go. I think that the uh, the cut quality on the 3 16ths and the 1 8 inch is dialed in. I really like the way it looks. No degradation by using the compressed air dryer from Harbor Freight. I don't see any difference between this and what I was getting out of the cam air. I'll be interested to see when I combine the two, you know, over the life of the consumables, how it ends up doing. Well, how did it do? I think it did pretty good. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And here are the, uh, the parts that I just pulled off of the table and I think they all look really good. Um, the real test will be over time, however. Does it really allow your consumables to last longer? I will continue updating in the description of my video on how the consumables do in the next couple weeks and months and what kind of trends I notice and hopefully I find a better trend while I use the, uh, the air dryer from Harbor Freight. All right, too funny. Well, I was just doing the final edits for this video and Anthony Sanchez, you wrote me and asked if I could do a little bit about the sound levels for uh, the, the setup. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm using my uh, my iWatch to get the uh, the sound levels. It's saying that my voice is too loud. My wife says that all the time. Anyway, let's turn this thing on first and you'll see the sound level here. Now let's go ahead and check out the uh, compressor. Well, I hope that you learned something, especially if you're in the market for a compressed air dryer. If you happen to be here because you're in the market for a Langmire Systems table, well, there's a link in my description below and also at ntdracing.com for those tables. I am an affiliate with Langmire Systems. I do stand by my last three videos where I talk about the amazing value that these tables are because they're a low price point, the amazing cut quality, and also the customer service, not the traditional customer service you're thinking of. I invite you to go to their Facebook page and look at what their thousands of amazing table users are saying and how they're helping each other out using CAD, fire control, and the other things like Fusion 360. Also go to the Langmire Systems forum and look at how the Langmire Systems team is identifying and solving problems for their customers. I just don't think that you can beat the customer service that you're getting from this, uh, this company. As far as our YouTube channel goes, I will ask that you hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell for future notifications. Every time you do that, it tells YouTube that you like our content and it helps it get pushed out to other people and just helps us out. Uh, also, and by ringing the bell, you get to see the future content that's coming out. We're getting ready for the Vegas to Reno and also the Baja 1000. We're going to be doing all kinds of training and repairs on the, the truck from the last race. And you get to see those uh, videos. I sure hope you'll tune in and see those and we'll see you then. Take care of yourself.